want you to apply some complicated step size selection rule, so that's what you're doing. So for the <coughs> for computing the error, yeah, the error only um, it goes to zero over zero very quickly. So only have um, valid value for the first few steps. But I mean, it will go to zero, but it will still be ek plus one will still be less than ek. Yeah, but. Um, so are you plotting semi log or are you plot yes, plotting? Um, in my case, so it was it has valid value for the first steps, five steps, mm -hmm. and um, after that it's just zero over zero because uh, ek goes to. So zero. pick your x not very high. You might be picking it very close to, and so you're getting NaN in MATLAB. So that's a MATLAB problem, not a, not a theory problem. Oh, it's already on. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's get started with the, uh, with this particular lecture. So uh, in the previous class, we talked about. Uh, conjugate gradient, uh, sorry, conditional gradient method and gradient projection method. Uh, there were some questions in the class towards the end uh, that why would a minimum of a concave function appear on one of the extreme points of the set? So I wanted to go through. Well, the proof is in Bertzeker's book in the appendix, and it's pretty long. It's about uh, three or four pages of dense material. Uh, so I was looking for a, an easier proof, something that is that I can present in the class without actually going through a lot of technical challenges. And I found one proof in uh, in a functional analysis book. Okay, uh, so it uses a specific theorem, that, a, a specific lemma. Um, which I'm not going to prove in the class, but I'm going to show you pictorial, pictorially what that lemma means, and then I'm going to go ahead and prove the result, okay? Uh, and it's not going to take too much time, so it's good for us. So the setting is as follows. I have f from x to r, and this is a concave function. Okay, so far we have always concentrated on convex function, but this time I'm talking about concave function. And x is, of course, a convex set. And I want to solve this problem minimum of fx such that x is in the capital set, uh, x is in the set capital X. Okay. Uh, what does this look like? So this is my set, capital X. Here is my function. On top of this capital X, this is my f of X. And the theorem that we are going to prove today is that the minimum of this function, this concave function, over this convex set will be one of these four points. So okay, that's what we are going to prove. Once again, uh, concave function over a convex set, the minimum will be one of these vertices. Okay. So in order to prove this result, I need to introduce the notion of extreme subset and extreme points. Okay. So A set F, which is a subset of uh, X, is an extreme subset of X if and only if. This is a definition.
for every x in capital F, if y z in x exists alpha in 0, 1 open interval such that alpha y plus 1 minus alpha z. I want y and z to not be equal to x, y not equal to x, z not equal to x is equal to x implies that y and z also belong to f. Actually, uh, I don't need this condition. So I'm going to erase this condition. Sorry about that. That is required for some other definition. OK. Um, so y and z could be equal to x. We don't know. Uh, and we don't particularly care if they are equal to x or not. And then extreme point X in capital X is an extreme point of X if and only if the singleton set X is an extreme subset of X. So everyone has finished writing, so let's, uh, let's look at the first definition. So I have that convex set that I've drawn. Okay, uh, let's consider, let's consider a set inside this particular capital X. Uh, I pick a point in this particular set and I pick, so this is my x, I pick y, I pick z, okay? And I can pick an alpha in 0 and 1 such that x is equal to alpha y plus 1 minus alpha z. Is y and z in the set capital F? So this is my set capital F. Are Y and Z in the set capital F? No, right? Because F is the small set, X is a point in F, and I can pick Y and Z in the larger set capital X and an alpha between 0 and 1 such that the convex combination of these two points is equal to X. And it doesn't imply that Y and Z, both of them are in F. Therefore, F is not an extreme subset, okay? So which other uh, set could be an extreme subset, okay? So just draw your attention, don't, don't start writing at this point of time. 
So this is not an extreme subset. So if I pick a set in the interior of the set capital X, it's not an extreme subset. So let's look at the boundary. So let's look at these, this particular line segment. I pick a point X in capital F. So my capital F set is this uh, particular uh, line segment. Uh, I pick Y and Z in X such that the convex combination has to be equal to X. So if I pick a point X in F, I have to pick Y and Z, which is on this particular line segment. And then the convex combination is in the set capital F. And in this particular case, we see that Y and Z, both of them are in F. Therefore, this particular line segment is a extreme subset or face of the convex set capital X. Similarly, this particular set is an extreme point, uh, sorry, is an extreme subset. This set is an extreme subset and this set is an extreme subset. So for this particular set capital X, the extreme subsets are this uh, subset, this particular subset, this subset, this subset, and the unions of all these subsets. Okay, so look at the boundary. So the, in this case, the extreme subsets are at the boundary. But the important thing to note here is that the extreme subsets are not just any subset of the boundary. So if I pick this particular subset at the boundary, it's not an extreme subset of capital X because if I pick a point X in here, I can find Y and Z which are outside the set under consideration such that X is a convex combination of those two points. Okay, which means that any segment will not be an extreme subset. It has to be the whole starting from this end point, starting from this vertex to this particular vertex. The entire set has to be included in the extreme subset. Now, X is an extreme point if singleton X is an extreme subset. So in this case, this won't be an extreme point, but this will be an extreme point because if you write it as a convex combination of two elements of the set capital X, then the two elements have to be, uh, have to be this point itself. It can't be any other point. Okay? So in this situation, we have many extreme subsets, but we have only four extreme points. One, two, three, and four. These are the only four extreme points. All right, so I've gone through the argument. Any questions about the two definition? Yes? So you mean the extreme subsets are always at the boundary? So extreme subsets are always at the boundary, yes. Um, but uh, like your, your case is true before. Like the, um, so you can have? In the, the subsets. Sorry? Uh, the, 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 the three points x, y, z, the cases you showed before uh, in the convex set. Yeah, so in this case you have, well, so you have to be careful. So extreme subset could be union of this line and this line. That's also an extreme subset. Okay? So it's not just, just this line segment is an extreme subset. This line segment plus this line segment is an extreme subset. This line segment plus this plus this line segment. So the union of three sets is also an extreme subset. Okay? So you have this extreme subset and then you can take the unions and they are all going to be extreme subsets. Um, I mean, the case is you showed before, before this one. Like, um, you draw three points X, Y, and Z. Inside this combat set. Oh, inside, okay. Yeah. Um, so I think that uh, in, in this case, it's, it's also satisfied the definition. Uh, well, I pick a point. So let's say this is my set under consideration F. I pick a point X. I can pick points outside the set 
and x will lie on the line segment connecting these two points. So y and z are no more in the set F. Okay, so y and z have to be in the set F in order for it to be an extreme subset. So therefore, this is not an extreme subset. But then you can choose a point x and y and z inside the. Yeah, but it has to be true for all, all such y, z, and for all alpha. Well, not for all alpha, but you can always. So you have to be able to pick. And in the line segment. Yeah. Well, so. Uh, for every x and f, you can pick y and z in capital X and alpha in z 0, 1 such that this holds true. Then these two points have to be in the set f itself. Can I choose, like, like you choose a border, can I choose a, a diagonal line? Diagonal line? Yeah. So if I pick a point here, yeah. I can write it as a Right? So the points y and z don't belong to don't belong to the extreme phase. Okay? Yes. Oh. I think you are right. Yeah, the whole set could be an extreme subset of itself. Yeah. <coughs> okay? So the idea of extreme subset and extreme point is clear for a set of this type. Now, if I have a some other solid object which looks something like this, uh, then the extreme subsets are all these faces. So, so this is an extreme subset. This is an extreme subset. This is an extreme subset. This line segment is an extreme subset. This line segment is an extreme subset, and so on and so forth. Okay. So you have a lot of extreme subsets, but the extreme points in this case are all these points. Okay, these vertices are the extreme points. Okay. In the case of a sphere, the extreme points are each of these points are extreme points, okay, because they cannot be written as convex combination of distinct points in the set. They are all extreme points. And of course, the extreme subset is the whole thing itself. Okay? And of course, individual points, they are also extreme subsets. So as you can see, extreme subsets are usually at the bound. I mean, not usually, but they are always at the boundary. Uh, yeah? Uh, how is the uh, second definition that extreme points, uh, I'm not able to understand how this definition in this case? Uh, in any case. Oh, in any case. OK. So let's pick this point. OK. Let's pick a point. Let's pick a point x here. OK. I can write x as a convex combination of two distinct points, y and z, that are not in the set cap. So y comma z does not lie in x, but I can still write x as a convex combination of y and z, right? So therefore, it's not an extreme point. Now let's pick a point here. This is my point x. Uh, the only two points I can pick so that x is a convex combination is the point itself, right? So therefore, it's an extreme point. Omar. Uh, x has to be convex for it to make sense. No, no. no. Yeah, this is, this is defined more generally for any, any set X. But in this case, we are only looking at convex sets. Yeah, but it doesn't require, the definition doesn't require X to be convex. How is the surface of a sphere an extreme subset? Like, how would you pick Y and Z? You cannot. The point itself has to be Y and Z. So, all, okay, so all the points are extreme points and then together. That's right. Not the all the points, only at the surface. the surface. Yeah. yeah, all of them are extreme points. Yeah, so each point individually is an extreme subset, and all the points itself is an extreme subset. Okay, or any, any combination thereof. So you can take a small patch on the surface. Let's say you pick this patch. That's an extreme subset also. Okay. Any other question? Okay, 
So the important thing to note here is for a polyhedral of this type, the extreme subsets are these faces, these edges, and so on. Uh, and the combinations thereof, the extreme points are all these points, the corner points, okay, the vertices of this particular polytope. So extreme points of a polytope are the vertices, okay? This is something we should always remember. Okay, now I want to uh, write one lemma for which I am not going to write the proof because the proof involves sort of heavy analysis techniques. X in Rn uh, set, F in X an extreme subset that is compact, then F contains an extreme point of the set X. <clears throat> so what is, what is compact? It's closed and bounded. Closed and Bounded. So, proof page two ninety six of Aliprantis and Border. The book name is, I think, 2006. The book name is Infinite Dimensional Analysis. Okay, let's see what does this imply? What does this lemma mean? Uh, let's look at the sphere first. This X is a set, in our case it's a convex set, so we are only considering convex set though some of these results, not some of these results, I mean both these definition as well as the lemma applies to more general sets, it doesn't have to be convex. But uh, we are looking only at convex sets. So F is an extreme subset that is compact. So let me pick a compact set, a closed and bounded set, which is this set. The conclusion is F contains an extreme point of the set capital X. So is, does this set, this is a compact extreme subset of the set capital X. Does this contain an extreme point of the set X? Okay, so it does, right? Because all these points are extreme points. Let's consider the other example. Oh, so it's right here. Uh, what is an extreme subset? Uh, so in this case, well, let me draw another figure. Let me draw it here. Okay, so this was the figure. This is my extreme subset. Does it contain an extreme point of the set X? So this is my set X. This is my set F. Does it contain an extreme point of the set X? What are the two extreme points here? It's this vertex and this vertex. 
Okay. So X is a set. F is an extreme subset that is compact, so it's closed and bounded. So F contains an extreme point of the set capital X, okay, which are these two points. More generally, let's look at that polytope we had drawn. Okay, this is the polytope. This is an extreme subset, right? This whole face is an extreme subset. And does it contain extreme points of the set X? Yes, these are the four extreme points that are contained in this particular extreme subset. Yes? How can that F be extreme subset? Because it's curved. Yeah, it's curved. So every point is an extreme point, and then I take just the union of extreme points, that's an extreme subset. The important thing is it has to be closed and bounded. So in all these cases, we have uh, closed and bounded, uh, closed and bounded sets. Uh, let's look at a. Man, Omar, you had a problem. You had a question. No, I didn't. No. Sorry. Okay. There was another question. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at that. Let's consider this set. It's a convex set. It's an unbounded set. It goes all the way to plus infinity on this side and minus infinity on this side. Uh, the extreme subset would be this particular line, OK? Because, uh, yeah, so that's an extreme subset. However, it's not closed and bounded. Well, it is closed, but it's not bounded. And therefore, uh, but, and in this case, it doesn't contain any extreme point of the set X because the extreme points would be minus infinity and plus infinity. Yes. Yeah, what's an example of an extreme subset that is not closed? Oh, uh, so let's assume that in this particular convex set X, I remove the vertices from the set itself, then it's not closed. Okay. So what if I select a boundary F that does not contain these uh, vertices? Uh, I, I select a segment of that. Uh, yeah, but we had mentioned in the past that if you pick any segment of this extreme subset, then it's not an extreme set itself. Okay. Yeah, so in the case of sphere, every point is an extreme point, and I'm just taking a collection of extreme points and defining it as an extreme subset, okay? In this case, none of these points are extreme points. These are the extreme points, and so the boundaries is always going to be included in the extreme subset. So that means that every uh, extreme subset must have an extreme point. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. Well, as long as it's compact, which is closed and bounded. Okay, so in this case, I removed all these four vertices. I'm not changing the convexity of the set X. X still remains convex. But now, each of these extreme subsets don't include the endpoints, and therefore, they are open. They're not closed, even though they are bounded. And in this case, F doesn't contain any extreme point of the set X. This is another case where it's closed, but it's unbounded, and it doesn't contain any extreme points of the set X. This is the set X. Okay, everything below the x-axis. So it's a convex set. This face is a closed face. It's an extreme subset, but it doesn't contain any of the extreme points of the set X. In fact, in this case, the set X doesn't contain any extreme points uh, because it goes all the way to infinity in all directions. Okay. So hopefully by now, you are comfortable with the idea of extreme subset and phase. You are comfortable with the idea of extreme points. You understand that extreme points of a polytope are the vertices, assuming that the vertices are included in that polytope. And you understand this lemma, this implication, that if you have an extreme subset that is closed and bounded, then F contains an extreme point of the set X. Okay. So now we are in the position to solve this problem. Well, not this problem, but uh, to show 
that the minimum of a concave function uh, will include one of the extreme points of this convex set capital X. Uh, before I jump on to the proof, can someone tell me what exactly do we need to prove in order to show that the minimum will be achieved at one of these four extreme points? What exactly is it that we need to prove? Yes? That at the extreme point, the function has to be greater than that, the function at that point. That's right. That's, that's true. But I want to be using this lemma, right? Because, uh, because we are showing that uh, the minimizer would be an extreme. There will be an extreme point that is minimizer for that function. That's what we want to prove. So any thoughts how would we go about proving it? I'll let you guys think about it while I erase stuff on the board. There is no projection at this point of time. We are not doing any projection yet. Any other thoughts? OK. So let's uh, write down the result formally. Let me call it a theorem. Such that. What should I show? All I have to show is that F is a compact extreme subset of X. Okay, so F is closed and bounded, extreme subset of capital X. If I'm able to prove this result, from this lemma, I know that F contains an extreme point of the set X, right? So therefore, there is an extreme point at which the minimum will be achieved, okay? In this case, we have only four extreme points. So one of these four extreme points will be the optimal, one of the optimal solution. There could be more. Okay, so let's go ahead and prove this result. And I'm going to prove it on that side. Okay, so let's assume that X is compact. Then all I need to show is F is closed.
Okay? I'm making my life simple by assuming that x is compact. If x is non-compact, then we'll consider that case a little later. Okay. So let's first show that it's f is an extreme subset. So let x be in f, y, z in x. Assume <coughs> by way of contradiction <coughs> that y is not in capital F. So y is not a minimizer. <coughs> OK? <coughs> C is equal to x. OK? So, I'll let you guys write, and then we'll go ahead and prove the result. So what do I need to show? I pick a point x and f. I pick y and z in x, alpha and 0, 1, such that this is satisfied. I need to show that y and z are also in f. Let's assume by way of contradiction that y is not in f. What does this imply? f of y is greater than f of x. Why? Because x is the optimal solution of the function f. So if y is not in this set, then it means that y is non-optimal. So f of y has to be strictly greater than f of x. OK? No questions so far? So let me pick f of alpha x plus 1 minus alpha y. This is greater than or equal to alpha f of x. Well, oh, I shouldn't say x plus y, but alpha y plus 1 minus alpha z, alpha f y plus 1 minus alpha f z. which is strictly greater than f of x. And this is f of x equal to f of this. And this is because of f is concave. Okay, let's go through the line of reasoning again. I pick a point x and f. I pick two points y and z in x, alpha and 0, 1, such that this is satisfied. Alpha y plus 1 minus alpha z is equal to x. Assume by way of contradiction that y is not in f. So I'm picking a point y such that f of y is strictly greater than f of x because f is the set of all minimizers of the function. Uh, by convexity, I have that f of x is equal to this, which is greater than, strictly greater than f of x, because my f y is strictly greater than f of x. Okay, so of course, alpha f y plus one minus alpha f z is going to be strictly greater than f x, which is a contradiction because f x cannot be strictly greater than f x. Okay, so therefore, y must be in f. This implies y must be in f. And by the same argument, z must also be in f. So we have this result, OK? We have shown that y and z, both of them are in f.
OK, so I have shown that f is an extreme subset. Why should f be closed? Yes. Yeah, OK. So I'm going to prove by contradiction. So z is any point in x. So therefore, f of z must be greater than or equal to f of x, for sure. I'm assuming that y is not in f, for sure. OK? So f of y must be strictly greater than f of x because of the way I've constructed the set f. Now I go through this calculation and I realize that fx turns out to be strictly greater than fx, which is a contradiction. Therefore, our hypothesis that y, is, y was not in f was untrue. Therefore, y must be in f. It's a symmetric argument, so z must also be in f. And therefore, both y and z are in f, and f is an extreme subset. Yeah, so you, you should have equality all over the place, right? Otherwise, there is no contradiction. OK, so this implies that f is extreme subset. Now, all I need to show is that f is closed. How would I show that f is closed? Uh, no, that doesn't imply that f is closed. So I pick a sequence xn in f. So let xn be a sequence in f. xn converges to x bar in capital X. I need to show that x bar is in f. Any thoughts how can I show that x bar is in f? So I pick a sequence in f. And the sequence converges in x. Is x bar in f? That's the question. If it is, then f is closed. If it is not, then f is open. How would I show this? Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm using. That's the definition I'm using. So. A closed set contains, so the limit, if you pick a convergent sequence in a closed set, then the limit must also lie in that set. That's the definition of closed set. So I pick a, lim a, a sequence in the, close, in, in the set f. I let it converge to a point x bar, which is going to be in capital X because x is closed. Uh, is, now the question is x bar in the set f itself. and the way to prove it is, any, any thoughts on how to prove it? Who wants to give it a shot before I start doing it? Yes? If it's outside the set, then uh, the, value of, the value of the sequence converges to will be more than the value. That's exactly right. OK, so his argument is, I know that f of xn converges to f of x bar. And f of xn is constant. It's equal to minimum of uh, the function over the set x. So this implies that f of x bar is also equal to minimum y in capital X f of y. Uh, and this convergence is because f is continuous. So a concave function is continuous over a, uh, over a real Euclidean space. OK? So if you define a concave function over a closed set, it must be continuous within the set. And that allows us to prove this result. In order to prove this uh, more rigorously and more generally, of course, there has to be a little bit more set of lemmas and theorems that we need to prove. So this is like the simplest uh, proof that I could find. So I could do it in one class. 
So this uh, would imply that x bar is in f. So f is closed and f is extreme. So by this lemma, it contains f contains an extreme point of the set x, which implies that there will be one minimizer, which will be the vertex of the original convex set you started with. Oh, it's the class is almost over. Any question? Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's because x is compact to begin with. So you have a closed box, for instance, a closed. So it has to be bounded, right? Now, if x is unbounded, uh, let's consider a convex set which is unbounded. Oh, let's say a convex set that looks like this. Then what you need to do is you have to prove that your f, which is the set of minimizer, is compact set. It's a closed set. Uh, So if x is unbounded, then in that case, all you need to show is that f is compact, uh, sorry, f is a closed subset and a bounded subset, in which case you will have to do a little bit of work uh, you'll have to do a little bit of work in order to restrict yourself to a closed and bounded set. OK? What do I mean by that? You have to exploit the problem structure to restrict yourself to a closed and bounded set, which contains the solution. And then in, in that case, again, you can apply this lemma to prove that the solution will be at one of these two vertices. If it is possible, if it is not possible, then you are out of luck. Then in that case, you could have solution which spans the entire, entire plane going all the way to infinity. Uh, and that's not a well-defined problem. That's an ill-posed problem. And so you will have to refine your problem in order to make sure everything is uh, nice and the solution exists, which has a finite value and not infinite value. OK? So to prove it in the most, uh, the highest level of generality requires way more uh, things that we need to prove on the board. So I don't, I'm not enthused to talk about it right now, or rather in this particular class. It's probably a subject of a more higher level class. Uh, so this is what so this is what I could prove using minimal number of tools from multiple sources. Any question so far? So what's the implication of this? The implication is, if I pick a linear function, so I want to minimize C transpose x such that Ax is less than or equal to B. OK, so this is minimizing a linear function over a convex set. Then the solution, there has to be one solution, which is one of these vertices. OK, that's the upshot of this particular result. So if you're solving a linear program, then a solution must be at one of these vertex. If you're solving a linear program, min c transpose x, norm of x less than or equal to r, that's Solving a concave function, minimizing a concave function over a convex set, the solution must be at the boundary. Okay? That's the extreme point. Any point. Any, so, well, not any point, but there has, the solution will always be at the boundary. It won't be inside the set. Okay? So the proof in Bertzekas doesn't rely on this lemma. Okay, it uses the uh, separating hyperplane theorem to prove the same result, which is also something you can use. 
but uh, it requires a little bit more work and therefore I did not present that particular proof in the class. Okay. Now this idea was used in the conditional gradient method because it's, it was a linear program over a convex set, right? So the solution would always lie at the boundary. Any question? Okay, so I have uh, five more minutes. So I want to talk about manifold suboptimization method, which is also where this idea is useful. I want to minimize the function fx such that ax is less than or equal to b. Okay, so I have a specific constraint set, ax less than or equal to b. So let's uh, see pictorially what are we going to do. This is my set AX less than or equal to B. Okay. I'm going to start from the idea. The key idea is I'm going to start from a point on the extreme subset of this particular convex set. And I'm going to slide along this surface. Okay. I'm going to slide along the surface. This is my x naught. Until I hit an edge, then I'm going to slide along the edge. In the feasible, so each of these directions are feasible, which means that the value of the function is decreasing. Now I hit a roadblock, okay? At this point of time, I've hit a roadblock because I could either go in this direction or I could go in this direction, okay? So we will figure out a way to pick an appropriate direction. So let's say we pick this direction uh, and then we will keep sliding along this direction, okay? Until, let's say this is my X star and then we will keep sliding along this direction and then at some point of time we will branch out and then we will start moving towards X star. Okay, so this is the idea of manifold suboptimization method. It's a type of gradient projection method where instead of projecting the gradient over the entire set, we are projecting the gradient only onto the extreme subsets. Okay, uh, and as it turns out, projecting gradient on extreme subsets is much simpler and easier than projecting gradients on this whole big subset, okay? So we will do that and, and that's why it's called manifold suboptimization method because at each point of time, you're solving an optimization problem or a suboptimization problem over this manifold, okay? And then you are solving an optimization problem along this, uh, in, along this particular manifold, which is just a line here. And then when you reach here, you start solving optimization problem along this manifold and so on. Okay, so at every point of time, we'll break this optimization problem into a simpler optimization problem, which is optimizing over a linear manifold. And then we will continue our discussions on how this, how to pick appropriate direction and how to get to X star eventually. Uh, at this time, I'm not using any assumption on the function F except that it's a nonlinear function. So this idea is more general. You can do it, use it for any nonlinear function. But of course, if the function is concave or linear, then you know that the solution will always be at the, at one of these vertices. So by moving, sliding along these directions, you are guaranteed to get to one of the vertex that would contain the solution. Okay, 
So it's more suited for linear programming and for problems where the function f has certain structure which allows you to conclude that the solution will always be at these edges or at these vertices. If it is inside the set, then this solution will still, this method will still work, but it will just take more number of iterations. Because you're not directly going into the set until you reach a point like this where you can then start going inside the set. All right, so we'll have more discussion, detailed discussion on this in the next class. Thank you.